What is happening from 4E TV? I'm Dr. Mark with my wonderful, more beautiful, more intelligent, better half, Dr. Michelle. And we are M&M without, without the, the sugar. sugar. <laughs> you know, we're, we're like big kids at heart. Hey, listen, you know, today, uh, I'm glad you, you joined us because I want you to just kind of relax and sit down and, and chill out because um, we're going to talk about something today that really affects us in a, in a lot of different ways. We're going to talk about relationship or relational issues and how they can affect our health. And there's a lot of um, things that stem from broken relationship issues as well as healthy relationships. So with that said, you know, just in general, I mean, I look at it like this. We must get our priorities right. We're going to touch on this a little bit later and kind of anchor it down a little more. But to kind of right off the top, we are all about your well-being. We want you as an individual to be healthy and whole in all different areas. And we really want you to be um, healthy physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually in all those areas. And it's our desire at 4E to give you the tools necessary to spend time on a daily basis to attend to each of those areas continually. If you choose to do that, you will see that your life will be more enhanced and more blessed. Now, with that said, we're going to equip you with all the things necessary to do that. But today we're going to talk about this one little aspect of that in the relationship issues. And it deals with typically our relational priorities. Now, in the order of priorities, first things first, our relationship with our Heavenly Father is number one. There is no one else, no other person, not your spouse, not your best friend, not your children that should come above your relationship with God himself. Now, my wife, uh, Michelle, is beautiful. She's gorgeous. I love spending time with her. You know, we enjoy um, conversing, hanging out, doing nothing, doing something. We just enjoy being around each other. She is my best friend. But as best friend as she is, she cannot be more important than my relationship with God if she becomes more important than my relationship with God, I am not being all I can be for her. Now, with that said, I see many couples get together uh, in that fashion and have children. I see the transfer of importance of priority go from the Lord to the spouse and then the children. I would do anything for my kids. I love my kids. They're wonderful. I see people put all their focus and priorities on the kids loving their kids more than their spouse. When that happens, guess what suffers? Initially, the relationship with the spouse suffers because there's two folds or two failures in that. Number one, the kids don't see what a healthy relationship is about. And number two, the spouse of relationship between the husband and wife or the wife and the husband suffers. And overall, it causes a deteriorating effect in our relationship with the Heavenly Father. So there are priorities we must follow in order to have healthy and happy relationships. So with that said, I'm going to give you three things today that we must understand in regard to relationships, how to form them, and what they're about. Like three keys to relationship successes and how we can prevent some of the deteriorating or detrimental health effects from broken relationships. So with that said, we're going to go over three scriptures today that have three characteristics of healthy relationships. I'm talking about relationships with other people in that priority manner. God, our spouse, our children, and then others in that order. Notice job is down here somewhere. Okay. So with that said, the first scripture is going to be found in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. Now, I've got my nice beat up blue Bible here, which some of you have commented on over the times. But I'm going to get through it. The first one is Proverbs 13, 20. And I'm going to read this to you just so you know I'm not making this up. In verse 20 of chapter 13 of the wisdom book of Proverbs, we read, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. 
So the very first thing we must understand regarding relationships is we need to carefully select them. You're going to become who you hang out with. You really are. Even from a health perspective, there's some interesting studies regarding your relationship dynamics. As a matter of fact, people that struggle with weight issues, it's been said that they will continue to struggle with weight issues if they hang out with people that struggle with weight issues. If they begin to change their surroundings, their environment slightly, and hang out more with people that can help them in an area that have been down that path and got off of that path and are successful, they'll begin to change. So there's something to be said about who you're with. The words for us today are guard who and how much time you spend with these people. We need to really understand that every moment counts to spend the time with people that we need to be spending time with. And we know there are people out there that we have relationships with that are necessary, um, that, that are not where we are as far as faith. There may be some um, relationship crisis there. We still have to spend time with them. Maybe it's a broken family situation. However, we should spend most of our time in development with those people that are going to help us go to a higher level of encouragement, be with those people that are going to lift us up pull us up higher as opposed to pull us down. So the first key is this, carefully select those you spend most of your time with. Number two is found in John chapter 15, verse 13. Probably some of you can quote this, this verse, and I can too, but I'm going to turn to it as well so you'll know, again, that everything we do here at 4ETV is scriptural based. John 15, Chapter 15 and verse 13. And this is Jesus himself talking, of course. And we read, Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. So the second key piece of relational success is our relationship are to epitomize love. You heard that right there, to exemplify they're to be love. Relationships that are healthy are to exhibit or epitomize love. Where to love is Jesus loved. Now, I know that he's saying here that I would die for you. That's the kind of relationships we need to cultivate. Those that are important. Those are the ones we need to spend most of our time with. Who did Jesus spend his time with? You know, he had the 12 disciples, of course. One betrayed him. But there was a couple key guys really close to him, Peter, James, and John. The three key guys, you know, they were right there with him as he walked this earth in his earthly ministry. With that said, we are to epitomize. He was showing them by example what healthy relationships are supposed to be like. So that's the key. Number two is epitomize love in our relationships. What is number three? I want you to flip over to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Now in Hebrews chapter 10, we read the next key um, to relationship success. It's found in verse 24 and verse 25 of Hebrews chapter 10. The word of God says clearly, and let us consider how we spur one another on toward love and good deeds. That's talking about encouragement. And let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you'll see the day approaching. The third key is this regarding relationships. We are to cultivate them. That means you have to spend quality time with them. The cultivation phase, uh, phase uh, starts with actually the encouragement. Encouragement builds up. It imparts courage. It empowers people. I would rather have someone be around me that says, you can do this. You can. I know you can. Don't quit. I believe in you. Then I would have someone say, and I don't know, I don't know if you can do this or not. It's maybe too difficult. Now, you know what I'm talking about there. There are people out there that fall into those habits on either side of that fence. But we're to hang out and cultivate those relationships that are built upon encouragement. And that encouragement is really uh, important to understand. It's talking about encouraging each other and spurring one another on to be better in those love relationships. Are you getting the flow to this? We're to pick people that are going to encourage us, that are going to spur us on to be better in love relationships. 
those keys are important. They continue to perpetuate from one another, and you can see how the strength and the depth and the width of those relationships will grow in the Lord if they're held in proper standards, if we're following those three key principles. Now, with that said, again, to, to tag on what I said at the beginning of today's time, the priority relationships we're after is God first, our spouse or significant other second, our children third, and others down the line and fourth. Now, if we can get those priorities right and, and we're in good shape, but if those get out of line, which there are a tendency to do sometimes, it affects not only relationships, but it affects our health. And now, I know that as, as Michelle and I talk, I mean, I've asked you several times, we have these conversations about patients that, that end up in either of our offices, and we, we try to find out what's going on in their personal life so that we can help them out, because we realize that's such a key to their success in their health journey if they can get these relationships fixed how many people do you see typically and what kind of relationship uh, failures or problems do you see well we're all human mark so a hundred percent of us have some form of relationship issue whether it's a relationship issue with food compulsive overeating uh, drinking relationships with substance uh, some people have relationship issues with money. We overspend. Mm -hmm. That, of course, is going to backfire on us and cause us relationship issues in our primary relationships, such as our spousal relationships and relationships with our family. And then that gives us intimacy issues. We have intimacy issues as parents, and we have issues raising children. So we see all kinds of issues that are related to to um, relationships. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's really wild um, as we talk about these things because we'll, we'll have, hey, uh, you know, we'll talk about patient X, Y, Z, and we'll say, tell me about that person. Tell me your perspective. And it's amazing what we'll, we'll hear them talk about. Uh, invariably, I have someone sitting across from me in, in an office, and, and I'll ask the question, what can I do for you? What do you hope to get out of this? Give me the top two things you hope to get out of this particular visit or our time today. And you know what I hear typically, it starts out like this. Well, I want to lose weight and I want to feel better or something along those lines. I'm like, okay, that's cool. So tell me about what that looks like for you. And they begin to go into this long story about where they are right now and what they can't do. And then I ask the question, what got you here? I ask the question, what brought you to this place in life? And then I hear things like this. Well, you know, I went through a divorce several years ago. Or, you know, my kids, they sure are struggle. One of them is going through a divorce right now or is in jail, and I'm really stressed out about that. Or my mother, my father, they've got some illness, and I'm, I'm the caregiver the primary care and I'm just running back and forth and it, it's really it's funny uh, I hear things even as like this you know my husband or wife just doesn't support me they don't support me in what I do they don't support me in my weight loss and, and sometimes you know they just tell me they they love me just like I am but I know that's not true because they won't spend any quality time with me and it's it's really fascinating we see that and I find that really the cause of all these health issues was indeed the broken relationship. The health issues are just a symptom of a more deeper problem that needed to be fixed. W would you say that that is synonymous with what you see as well? Oh, absolutely. What are some conditions that you see actually come up that, that you, you treat typically for a relationship brokenness, if you will, medical conditions? Well, one of the major issues is depression. Individuals show up in the office with, you know, the moody blues or they just can't get past the feeling of not wanting to get out of bed or inability to cope. And medication after medication after combinations of medication really don't solve the issue until we get down to what the primary issue is. And oftentimes it is a fundamental breakdown in a primary relationship or a work relationship or some form of a stronghold that they really haven't 
told me about or let me see a window into what's really going on. So unless as providers we're a little bit more sensitive and kind of know how to ask questions between the cracks, oftentimes we're blindsided by knowing or understanding that there might be something under that depression. You know, and not only depression, think about what relationship issues drive you to. It drives you to compulsive behaviors. Those cult compulsive behaviors may be alcohol, they may be food, it may be some sort of drug, but when you look back at what that big trigger was, oftentimes it is something that has either happened in childhood like a, a traumatic experience uh, that may have happened, a divorce with a parent or a relationship that went bad in the, in the life of the young that then drives them to some sort of stronghold behavior such as alcohol and compulsive uh, overeating. You know, and then those behaviors then further drive other conditions like metabolic syndrome and then diabetes and blood pressure. And it all boils down to what that fundamental trigger is way back at the foundation. So we have to be very careful in looking at what is sitting in the chair in front of us when an individual comes in for, for help because oftentimes it's not what it looks like. It's something very, very fundamental and it is deep rooted and deep seated and it starts with primary relationship. I, I love, love, love how you put that because, you know, hear what we're saying here. When that primary relationship um, goes south or it begins to break, here's what happens. There's emotions called anger that gets in there. And when anger gets in there, anger can fester and grow inside of a person. And then issues of unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment get in there. And the whole thing perpetuates this, this ideal of these compulsive behaviors that Dr. Michelle was speaking of. Because when you start losing control of everything and you're mad at someone else, you're going to do things because the anger clouds your ability to see. It just clouds your judgment. When anger is left unresolved, it takes root in your health. It will mess with your sleep. It'll mess with your, your, your whole system and the way it works. When that happens, you turn to things like food because you can control those. It's really about a control issue. I've lost control. I can't make you do. I can't make you love me. So I'm going to control what I can control by eating this bag of cookies. And, you know, I, I'm not being funny when I say that, but that's what people do. They control things like this bowl of ice cream or this pack of cookies because they can. And you can watch this. It's almost like a hovering effect when they begin to eat. It's just protect it because I don't want anybody to take this. My relationships have already been taken away. You're not going to take my cookies. And it really, we are, again, we, we joke at the beginning of shows many times about we're just big, grown up big kids, you know. We, we knuckle bump and blow it up and all that stuff, Eminem without the sugar. But really, we're all just big kids in adult bodies. And when these relationships break like this, it's almost like I'm going to take my toys and go home. You know, you can't play with me anymore. And we throw these temper tantrums and they fester themselves in regard to our lack of control in regard to our food, our behaviors, our habits, and that begins to affect our health. When our, our health goes down, we begin to chase these symptoms around. We, we go towards the nearest uh, weight loss supplement or the nearest fad diet or the nearest exercise craze that we think is going to fix something quickly. And in reality, those are just chasing the symptoms of a bigger issue. It's like putting a Band-Aid on an open wound because the real issue is a broken relationship that either needs to be mended or there needs to be forgiveness offered because some relationships when they're broken because one person chooses not to they cannot be mended but we can also what as far as our part goes is we can yield or offer up forgiveness and release that person from the uh, debt that we're putting on them that in turn releases us to be free again and we can be healthy. I, I know that uh, resonates with you because we've talked about this so much regarding people that come in. How many times do you see people that sit across from you and they are mad about something and they're blaming their health issues on the other person? Uh, it, it, 
not necessarily just another person, but an event or something has happened. There's been a relationship that's that's gone sour or south, uh, sour or south, south, and now they're 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 struggling. And we spend so much time, we spend so much of our extra change in a different bank account than the present. So when we're not at home in the present, we can't really even concentrate or focus or give our all because we're spiraling out of control around something that isn't even in the moment. So those things that are affecting our mind and taking us out of the present moment have far-reaching effects outside of what's really happening right then. So it's really important for us to evaluate where are we spending our change. If we have 80% of our change on different things that have happened in the past, and like Mark said, we're putting blame on our work life, our you know, expenses, our spouse, our you know, ex-boyfriend, or whatever that is, if 80% of that is spent other places, we only have 20% for the present moment, and think of all the things that need to be handled right then. We're not really present to be able to manage what we need to manage because we're not there. That's such a great point because we see people suffer with that and they just won't let it go. It's just on and on and on. And, and you, you said that correctly in a sense that they blame their um, loss of control on this broken relationship or this event in life, this ca catastrophic event that they may or may not have been able to control. But then they begin to self-medicate. So talk about that self-medication in regard to these, these things we're talking about regarding our health. Well, self-medication can be in a, a very wide realm of things. It may start off with, you know, just a Tylenol for a headache, and then that Tylenol may move to medications for a headache from the doctor, which then may move to narcotics, and then it's pill-seeking and drug-seeking, and before you know it, you have narcotic and drug addiction. Or it may be alcohol. You know, you go home and you have one cocktail, and that one cocktail turns into two cocktails. And before we know it, it's a bottle of wine a night, every night of the week. And by the time we finally realize it, we've developed alcoholism or problems with alcohol, which further complicates our primary relationships and perhaps even with food. Food is, food is harder to give up than Food habits with food are harder to change than changing or breaking a habit with crack cocaine because we have to eat every day. We can give up drugs and move away from drugs and alcohol, but we always have to eat. So our habits and our relationships with food can be very, very detrimental in terms of our health and cause us a lot of chronic health conditions just like drugs and alcohol. That is really something because this idea of self-medication starts slow. We think we need something to uh, relax us or to stimulate us away from the current um, ills of this situation. We think we need uh, something to make us feel good because everything else is feeling bad. But it really starts out slow, doesn't it? Like one time occasionally, then every night. And then we begin yeah. to get desensitized to that and want more. Well, and then oftentimes we forget what the trigger even was. We lose consciousness of what even started that behavior. And before we know it, we are buried underneath a lot of unhealthy habits because we're either mad at something, we're holding a grudge, we've got unforgiveness going on, we've lost trust and faith in humanity. And, and remember, human, humans are always going to let us down. The only one that's not going to let us down is our Heavenly Father. So once we come to grips with, we're not going to be able to control mankind and the actions of man, then we can start to manage our own lives and our reactions and our responses to other individuals so that we can salvage and we can work with our relationships and we can really cultivate those primary relationships around us and have power in our lives with the friends and the people that we hold close and dear to us. Like Mark indicated in the first place, we really want to carefully select and we want to 
epitomize that love in our relationships, and then we want to continue to cultivate the right kind of relationships going forward to create long-term health. Yeah, and it's, it's really, um, really amazing when you kind of get down um, to this idea of relationships. We can, you know, the, our enemy out there, the, the father of lies, has got a counterfeit for everything. I mean, really, you know, he wants to take um, a relationship or a thing and divert us away from our love for our Heavenly Father. He wants to... Um, in fact, our prioritization of these relationships and get us off and get that priority out of line. Subtly, over time, it happens. And when these habits begin, these self-medicating things begin to kind of take over, eventually our focus goes from um, fixing the relationship, we're mad, we got these habits going on, now the habits became the focus, our health suffers, and now all we're concerned about is high blood pressure. And he's diverted our attention from our relationship to the Lord and focused it on a health problem. And it really boiled down, if you can follow this train of thought, back to the broken relationship or the um, unexpected event that we're still dealing with and we haven't dealt with finally. So I want to encourage you again to go back right now, wherever you are, if you're struggling in some of these areas, don't be afraid to go backwards and analyze your current relationships. Are they carefully selected? Do they meet this criteria? Do they epitomize love? And are we cultivating the right ones? Are we building those ones? Or are we spending time that people are going to drag us down? And it's not to say you just cut people off from your life, but you might need to. You hear what I'm saying? You might need to. The bottom line is our relationship with Jesus must not suffer. When our relationships are on proper prioritization, we will be at peace when we're at peace our health has a much better opportunity of being at peace and not in a state of dis-ease are you with us you see it's really like you know as we talk many times to people about getting this these basics this foundational things right versus chasing little symptomology around you know doing this for that really it's core issue i mean functional medicine okay functional medical institute it goes deeper, much, much deeper than just medicine. It goes down to the very core of the human being that we are, our spiritual, intellectual, physical, and emotional. It's right at the core of it. we got to get that fixed. And we try to do that every day, don't we? Every day we show up and shine. Showing up and us, shine. Help people out. I like to show up and shine. I want you to shine today. I want you to be encouraged. I'm glad you didn't uh, turn us off. I'm glad you hung with us because... We want you to shine and be blessed. Go to our websites, look us up, connect with us there, get in our newsletter, and let us become a part of your life and connect back with us and let us know how you're doing. God bless you and have a wonderful day.